So, get ready, guys. It is time. Begin the game. The end is never the end is never the end. Here's what that said. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. Oh my god. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. <laughs> no, my job is not quite that mundane. And then mundane. one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Uh -oh. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So this game is all about kind of reacting to what the narrator says and doing things. Like the narrator just said, he got up and got out of his office. What if I don't? What are you going to do, game? <laughs> you, there might be a special ending if we just don't touch the controls at all. We just leave it going. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. We'll like leave it for a few seconds and see if he says anything. Because sometimes you get some really funny things when you defy what he's telling you to do. Because he's kind of narrating the game, but you can go against his narration. It's really funny. Oh, those open floor designs could be terrible, Rosbergs. Do you remember this one, Rosbergs? It's so funny. Okay, I don't think anything is going to happen here. So we'll start to move. So I think the only buttons are jump, which I can't jump right now. Crouch. And E is interact, like if you want to open up a door or something. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I noticed our door just closed behind us. We can't get back in there. So go to the meeting room. Like I know where that is. I hate Mondays. Don't we all? Assuming Monday is your first day of work. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Do we follow the instructions or go against it? I think we'll follow the instructions this first round. And then the game does reset a lot and you can try totally different scenarios. It's so eerily quiet. Yet there was not a single hmm. person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let's see. What are our targets? Push for funding for research and development of new coffee machine. Nice. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. <laughs> Who moved my desk? <laughs> this is funny. Complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write next day's agenda. Reflect. All you do is have meetings for meetings sake, right? Number of slides on this slide. <laughs> slides, charts, and charts and slides. Krim, me. That's me, Chris. Rate at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. <laughs> oh, that's so random. Rate of increase in graphs per slide. 
Please, no more charts. Stop. <laughs> the Boss Appreciation Minute. On your Boss Appreciation Minute worksheet, circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill out in triplicate and return to your Boss Appreciation Specialist. Solving Interpersonal Conflict. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, but more inclined toward conflict, unless you're the kind of person who initiates conflict. Oh my gosh. What are your dreams for the future? Mitosis? Less air? Comatose? <laughs> Transcend? <laughs> Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time every day with no expectation of promotion or recognition, and then don't get fired. It's that easy. How to solve how to solve a dispute with a coworker? Let it ball up inside of you. Take it out passively aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you. Using slides to assure the employee that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on the text. Everyone is unique, you most of all. That's so silly. Synergize core value expenditures. Shift global market parade. Or there's more to that. Uh, monetize free to play. Oh God, let's get the hell out of here. And speaking of eerily quiet, relentless, uh, your local supermarket is having some renovations done, and it's so weird because it's so quiet. The announcements and stuff are not playing at all. Oh, that would be weird. You're just used to those sounds. Yeah, comatose was an option. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, the boss is upstairs. I hate management speak, like synergize, just like, you know, those words that are practically completely meaningless. They just like to hear them. Executive bathroom. Oh, we can go in here. Because the boss knows what the boss says goes. If the boss has suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Interesting. Extreme bathrooms. Okay, I think you can... Left click is the same thing as pressing the key. Listen to that. Oh, I just got an achievement. <laughs> it said you can't jump. Um, e is like a, like a typing key, I think, in this. And uh, Jedi, Yoda, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Oh, I bet Relentless is like, something's off. How come I can hear myself? I can hear myself breathe. Here's the receptionist area. The beige pages. <laughs> Not yellow pages, beige pages. That's it. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 284. Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. No, there's no way we could know that. I love that he tells us the key code. Oh, something appeared on the screen. Can I grab something? Like a cursor right there. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. There's a... Uh... Yeah, no. I gotta take a picture of this for Relentless. There we go. Okay, two, two eight, eight, four, four five. five. <laughs> yeah, I love how he keeps telling us that. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct Whoa. code by sheer on? luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. I definitely feel like they updated the graphics. For this. I don't remember the lighting being quite this good before. Oh, that sounds like a, like a nightmare, Rossbergs. It's like, why do I have to translate all this meaningless junk? 
<laughs> True. Wait, when's nap time, Dingo? You guys get nap time at your work? <laughs> You're right, Jedi? The narrator loves it. I mean, they want to make sure in case you listen to it, but you just in one ear right out the other. He has to keep saying the code so you know what it is. I don't think there's any other way to progress. Wish it's dark. I'm glad I didn't make the game any darker. It's so weird playing a Descending game with loading deeper screens. into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. <laughs> loading, loading, loading. And, I mean, I guess just because of the games I've been playing recently. Oh, gosh. That's broken. Not many games have had loading. Can I try to go back up? You can go back up. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Hmm. Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. I don't know if I've ever done this before. <laughs> Oh, oh, just for the kids. Too bad you can't have a nap time too, Dingo. Here yep. we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. He's so it's demeaning. That keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Can we type in the code over here again? Uh-oh. Didn't like that. One, two, three, four. Nope. <laughs> I don't think there's any way out of here. You have to go back. I love that he just teases you from going back, though. Yes, Rainbow. How's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, we played the original for like an April Fool's Day thing. We didn't complete the game, but we just did as much as we could. But this is like an updated version with a bunch of new stuff. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? <laughs> Quit making fun of me. I'm <laughs> just trying things out. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? Hold on. We gotta try one more time. Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. <laughs> I, I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? I love the this. The suspense is killing me. We just gotta like tease the narrator as much as we can. <laughs> hey Judge, thank you so much for the raid, dude. How's it going? What were you streaming, Judge? I'm, I'm sure nothing's changed, but you gotta check, right? Oh my god. It's the boss's office. I can't believe it. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. <laughs> Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. <laughs> I think this is new. I'm not sure. I didn't see this before. Dun, dun, dun! I had no idea what was going to okay, happen. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's going to, like, waste our time because we're wasting his time, right? Oh, that's great. And Judge, it's going pretty good. You just got out of Haven and Dragon Age Inquisition. I love the Dragon Age games. I never played two, but I really enjoyed the first one and Inquisition. And I'm excited to see what they do for the new one. All right. I have fully come to terms with it. 
I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. <laughs> Can we continue? You know we have to do that again. We absolutely have to go up that elevator again. I'm scared the narrator's going to kill himself. Of course. Going back down to the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. His snark, like, physically hurts me. <laughs> it's so thick. Gotta do it just one last time. Or at least until he repeats himself. Or he just doesn't say a damn word. He's just hmm. quiet. Oh, you know what? I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? <laughs> there we go. Isn't this so much more exciting? So much, you know, Stanley, it seems so like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the Obey. very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This oh is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. <laughs> Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital. And alive. I do like That's why that people like think. you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know. People look up to you. Which is why... Really? Oh, I didn't know when to spring this on you, but... Well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public oh eye, gosh. but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Whoa! Oh good, we're here. <laughs> what the hell? I'm really expecting to go back to the office. There's actually going to be a press conference? That was a perfect quote, Relentless. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Oh, you can't go back down again. <laughs> All eyes on Stanley, live on stage. And Scout, how's it going, Scout? Good to see you. Live, the guy who went to Mars. How we did it, the pyramids. And world's healthiest human being. All tricks revealed. Just eating salad. Gosh, what's going to happen? World peace baby. <laughs> what? Ah, yes. Here it is. Just through this door. World's first sentient machine. Oh, that's scary. Doing great. A conversation with Alexander the Great. <laughs> All 
right. Are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay. He almost sounds genuine. It looks genuine. like they're ready for you. Go get them. To stage. Welcome, Stanley. Stanley Ryder. Almonds, chair, gum, table, nut bar. That's what we require. It's in our contract. Oh, I love that. The uh, little chair, 427. That's our number. Hey, Jada. How's it going, Jada? Yeah. Alexander the Great didn't do so great. <laughs> Break a leg, champ. Your boss. Story, Stanley, me, my dad. <laughs> That's funny. It's a picture of a guy just says, story. I love the way you ride elevators. Stanley, my true love for you. I wish I could like zoom in or something. My true love for you grows every day. You make me feel alive. Your wife from the apartment ending. <laughs> from the apartment ending. No one tells stories the way you do. Go get them, tiger. Thanks for shocking me. That cool skateboard trick in the parking lot or showing me that skateboard trick in the parking lot. You're too cool. Good luck on stage. Rock on. Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from. Your coworkers. Outside? <laughs> Is that where we came from? What does that book say? Uh, an unforgiving account of ups as well as downs. Highs and lows isn't what life's about. Or isn't that what life's about? Oh, there's like a little putting thing there too. That's cute. Oh, I guess that's our book that we created. An audience with the dude who came up with pizza. <laughs> They'd be long dead by now. Whoa, look at this. It's just a small gathering just to talk about how we tell stories, guys. You know, it's no big deal. Oh my gosh. This is really intense. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. Oh, that was it. Okay. That was funny. Yeah, I've never seen that before. This is why I definitely wanted to tell the game I have never played before. Because I, I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything that we had. All of this code the first time. gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked... He couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. If I remember right, there was like a way you could get out, out of one of these windows. It's been a while. I know! Just keep riding the elevator, Rainbow, and you get a really neat ending. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, I forget where it was, but I think there was like a room you can like crawl out of a window. It might be that room. But maybe only at a certain point can you do that. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, this time let's actually follow the directions a little bit further. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I know I have to do this first. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. This is one of my favorite ones that I remember. <laughs> there was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Broom closet, guys? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing <laughs> there doing sweet F.A. That's a nice wrench. Agreed, Judge. I know, unpainted. Are you, are everything you really exposed? still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. But yeah, there's nothing to get interact with. Can't grab anything. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? 
If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least she would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me, because literally, this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. The narrator really makes this game. It's so good. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The <laughs> broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> Love it. Good call, Relentless. Didn't even think about that. That, that works out. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Hey. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> wow. I don't remember that. He's tearing into us. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. I love how matter of fact that is. anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. Like me. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please <laughs> remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. <laughs> oh, I love it so right. much. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> this person is dead. Please replace them. Oh, good call, Judge. We don't want to let her know about it. That might be the last one. I'm not sure if it actually says anything more. We'll give it another minute, just in case. Like... What a crazy kind of game to program. You just have to think of every stupid, silly thing the player might do and just come up with a funny reaction to it. Like, I'm not surprised. I bet they had so much fun making this game that the thing they wanted to do most is make a extended version, you know? Let's make more of that. Yeah, I think it might be done. Ah. Second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. If we go back in the closet. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. <laughs> Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. It's great Anybody, please, anybody besides a human play this game. <laughs> Give him a second. Okay, I think that's probably it. I mean, one more time for old time's sake. Just to see. No, it's really done. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. And there's so many different branching paths. Like, I bet a breakdown of all the different paths you can possibly take is pretty big. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once Two, eight, again four, stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. All right, that's what one. could it mean? Four, two, Stanley five. wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. 
That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. <laughs> so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. They actually punish you for like trying to speed run it. <laughs> like I already know what the code is, so I was just gonna do it. No, John, you don't get to speed this up. We're actually gonna like purposely slow you down to the point you have to listen Feeling to like soothed elevator and music. rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Oh, that's so great. This time we will not take the elevator back up. I wonder, I don't think there's a way, but I wish there was a way to keep track of which endings you've gotten just so you know what you've done. But I think the game also blocks you off from getting endings multiple times, maybe? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Or do we escape? Mind Control Facility or escape? I kind of like breaking tradition and going on the other paths the first time through, so we'll go escape the first time. And is that Teleportonia? Is that right? How's it going, Teleport? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh, geez. Yeah, I like that mist. I don't think they had that mist in here before. The door behind <laughs> him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Because <laughs> they usually shut doors behind you, so they have to make sure. No, you can go back. It's fine. Good catch, Judge. I didn't even think about that. That's At this cute. point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Now we're all going to die at some point, right? They even make it look ominous. I like that. Yeah, who vaped in the hallway? <laughs> Whoa! It's a giant fall. How are we? As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, Meh. like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. Whoa. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Thank you, Stanley. There's no way out of here. Oh, God. Farewell, Stop. Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Oh, it's graphic. Oh! Or not. <laughs> or she helped us out. <laughs> I love that realness. You know death never stopped me. Whether it's my death or someone else's death. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? This whole room is just pitch dark. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, Death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? This is so cool. This is kind of like a breakdown of all the rooms we just went through. Like, I think this is the start of the game. Is that our office? Maybe not. But like, you can just kind of see the layout of the levels. Yeah, office layout. This blueprint shows... The office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added that altered throughout development through a core layout remains, although the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. I think I like narrator one the most Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Museum of game development, right? <laughs> nice, nice relentless. 
And then they have kind of like a prototype office doors. Button sounds. A selection of sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of keyboard strokes and a th synthesized one. Oh, interesting. Oh, and then they have their credits up here. Yeah, I definitely feel like this looks better than the original game. That one's playing solitaire. Employee database. Boss's office. Screens from development of the boss's office. Oh, you can just kind of see the different stages. The one on the right looks when they first created it. Put some bookshelves in and then textured it. <laughs> office clock. Looks so important up there. Oh, there's that mind control facility. I don't remember it saying escape up there. They changed that around. Oh yeah, an early version of the underground portion of the game. Narration outtakes. Stanley walked over the bridge. Oh, that's cute. You get little bits of what he was saying. Kevin Brighton, the voice of the narrator, recorded dialogue for the entire game roughly three separate times over the two years of development. These are clips from early takes that were not used in the final game. Now then, this elevator for sure will get him right back on track to where he was supposed to be in the story. That's really cool. When Stanley came to the lift, he traveled upward to the power source at the top of the facility to end this injustice forever. And yeah, as they're changing things in the game, I could see them having to hit him up again and be like, hey, we need you to re-record this line. Let's see, I don't think I've checked up here yet. It does seem like there's some underlying creepy stuff, doesn't it, Jedi? Freedom Ending. This is the very first incarnation of the Freedom Ending in the game's alpha. Countdown Desk. One of the desks from an early version of the Countdown Ending. The Freedom Ending. This is the Freedom Ending as it existed in the beta. And the monitor room elevator. For a time, the elevator in the monitor room could go up or down. The freedom above and countdown below. We abandoned this when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down. And placed the two endings together instead. Oh, that's funny. That That's the true horror. <laughs> was the uh, uh, co-workers we made along the way. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Oh, you could just go over there and turn off the game? Is that what that is? Let's keep exploring a little bit. Let's see, game design mock-up. This is the level that William, the level designer, sent Davy, the writer, as a kind of audition piece. The strength of this level got William hired to design the full game. Though much of the environment has changed, the basic layout from this mock-up is still in the game. That's cool. It's like almost a director's commentary put into the gameplay, huh? Stanley's office. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in November 2011, the second March in 2012, and the third February 2013. That's neat. Very subtle differences. <laughs> it's going to be very cool to old game, Relentless. I love it. And we do play a lot of games in a work setting. So it's going to work out. Kind of like um, Phantasmagoria 2 or something. An early version of the lounge. Narrator emails. After the second trailer we sent out, we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these further promotion materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of those emails. <laughs> From a cool man. I like that. <laughs> I love the... 
confusion in my voice there, Rainbow. It's like, um, I think I get it. Wait, do I get it? <laughs> Am I doing the right thing? Well, the thing I want to know is, what would you do if Stanley entered any other rooms? That's funny. Whoa, look at all the cash right there. I haven't seen that before. I wish I could read what was on those pages. I can't get close enough. The maintenance room. Okay, I think we've gone everywhere. So I think we are ready to uh, hit the big switch. Money, money, money. Money. I think it was over here. Yeah, here's the exit. I feel like we're just floating. We're not even walking anymore. The footsteps went away. And off. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Oh, we're back. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. We're just gonna Don't let it go. Time choose for you. Don't let Instant death. It's so nerve-wracking when a game tells you to quit. Like, maybe you can quit there? I'm not sure if that's actually a different ending or if it just, like, you know, leaves the game. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the freedom ending. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Yeah, I vaguely remember at some point we were able to climb out of there. But I think we need to wait until later. Yeah, we are very splat. You know, there was a game. Uh, I think it was X-Men on the Sega Genesis. And it had this weird mechanic where you actually had to, like, tap the reset button on the console to move on to the next stage. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on and his left. And it pretty much screwed everybody up because everybody thinks if you tap the reset button, it's going to reset the game. You'll lose all your progress, right? But if you just tap it, it actually sent like a signal that the game could like consume to do something else. If you held it for like a second, it would reset the console and you'd lose all your progress. But that was like, I remember renting that game and getting stuck there. And it was so frustrating reading that later, how to actually progress through that. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might for coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, <laughs> hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. I love that. I don't even have to use the code anymore. It just does all that for you. That's actually really funny. Yeah, I don't know what happens if I actually quit there. Should we try that or should we do the uh, mind control portion? I think we... I bet they're smart enough. I think we should try it just to see what it does. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Most normal people would just quit right there. <laughs> Go back. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. I think 99 might At have a point, cat crawling Stanley on the was keyboard. making a conscious, concerted <laughs> effort to walk forward Frost. and willingly confront his death. 
Oh, I had heard about that frost. That's actually a really clever way of handling it. And knowing, you know, how poor Bethesda programming usually is, they probably had like memory leaks and stuff all over the place. We'll just reset it once in a while. Fix the problem. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer. Yeah, let's see what the quit demise, option actually does here. It reflected here. that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. <laughs> he doesn't know I who he is agree. Trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. Good call, Rosberg. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. A noise when it stops. That's creepy. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. <laughs> it's like, joke's on you, and narrator. We didn't want to live anyway. Minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? So this time we can just book it directly to when the exit. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Such a creepy idea. Yeah, this way. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. It's so creepy when you realize you're still you in the trap. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time... But we'll just quit to menu. I think. Let's see what that does. Oh yeah, it actually goes back to the menu. Okay. The really cute little idea though that they did is look, the screen in the computer matches exactly what we're doing here on the main menu. That's cool. Yeah, this I guess it wasn't like a special a man named Stanley. Stanley All of his co we had to try gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. But this time we'll be sure to um, actually go through the office and then to the mind control area. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. And you got to pay attention because like little Yet things can change a single person here either. throughout multiple playthroughs. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Blah, blah, blah. We know the deal. And he like brushes this. I love it. Here's the door. Just go. It's even quicker that time. <laughs> Here's the door. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Didn't even bother turning off all the lights. Really rainbow. Oh, I mean, if you're... If you have more limited game experience, you had no idea what to expect from this game. I guess you might think that, but like, they're so short. How could you think the game is only like 10 minutes long, you know? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. At least when I first played it, even not really knowing exactly what to expect, I immediately wanted to play it again and take a different path. And because it puts you right back at the beginning of the game, you feel like you need to do that.
The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. That is a lot did of Did he TVs. have the strength to find out? Yeah, you know what that reminds me of, Rainbow? I remember there was like a funny video going around of a uh, game reviewer trying to play Cuphead. And they couldn't get past the tutorial where it tells you you need to like jump and dash to kind of get like more distance in that. And people were just kind of questioning, okay, at what point do game reviewers need to have like a certain skill level to like properly review games, you know? Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives watched. of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. What are we, 427? No, that's not our office. 472? I think it might be 472. I just want to see if that looks like our office. Mm, I don't think so. I don't see our computer there. I forget which number ours is. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions <laughs> had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? This whole game is like an existential crisis. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. We must for destroy. He would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay, I think we need to turn on facility power first. Yeah, this game probably would be a really weird one for, like, one of your first video games. I think we need to do this first. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. So we can turn it all off, right? Boom. Or we could continue with the mind control. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. Was this the free one? He had one? defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? I think this was my first what other mysteries did this before. strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, 
the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. There's no going back. Can't see anything to go back to. You can't be like, I changed my mind. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And nice Stanley thing. was happy. Aww. Like, that's almost like the best ending, isn't it? Not that it's true or actually happening, but it's probably the nicest ending. Yeah, that's the ending you get. It just says, the achievement I just unlocked, it says, beat the game. <laughs> I bet that's what the uh, reviewer did. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. So I definitely want to do that again, but this time try the other option. Where we turn the mind control stuff on instead of off. Probably get a very dystopian ending. You know, your character moves pretty quick. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. There's no actual run button. At least shift doesn't do anything. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Here's the door. Just go. <laughs> Just go. I love his accent. True judge. We'll see, right? <laughs> he almost walks so fast that you can uh, get the narrator to Stanley stumble over his words. Through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I mean, I, I don't. I never wanted to like cut himself off because the dialogue's so good. I want to hear all of it. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Unless you're doing it like a second he or third time. had the strength to find out. I wonder what a speed run is of this game, actually unlocking all of the different Now endings. the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. What a horribly inefficient room. It's hard to even, like, look at all these screens, you know, they're so far away. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. Never. <laughs> it was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Actually, we're... he would dismantle the controls once and okay. for all. Actually, we're going to do the opposite. Let's turn everything on and control them minds. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? <laughs> After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go. 
turn the controls off and leave. <laughs> if you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Oh, God. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Oh it's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy oh, no. it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More okay, the time to monitors all say you, three. About me, where we're going, what all this means. I, I like the barely music. know where to start. There's three. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. Or? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. Where's four? I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your There's office five. forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. Oh, we got I 50 seconds. I don't know where four this is. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost well, here's four. see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time Oh, I have to hit three clock. again. Why not? These are precious additional seconds. Three. Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Blue. Oh, no. Oh, dear me. What's the matter, Stanley? Five. Is it that you have no green. idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? <laughs> trying you to figure this out. When you saw that timer, that something in this room was capable of turning it off. Five. I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this you have room. three attempts these remaining. Numbered buttons. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Five Everything, green? anything. Incorrect. Something here will save me. One red. Why what does that mean? Stand me. That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stand me. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. <laughs> I love to it. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Now it says three. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30, 30 seconds. seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Oh no. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Now it just says goodbye. Go peacefully? Another choice. I'm going to go hit Make it the count. big red oh, button. Don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. Oh, I can't. Me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fail. Dang, I don't think I've seen this before. I say, oh my god. Nukes went off. <laughs> I wonder how I did that. Did you guys understand how the mechanics of that room worked? We have only like three minutes to figure it out or something, but it looked like it showed a number and a color on the screen. But All when his I... co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh, I think I might have done it. Yeah, there's like a glitch where you stand on that chair and you can get up here. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map yeah, until he heard outside. this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. 
So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? <laughs> okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Well, there's you a window. this gag yet? No. Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing <laughs> what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though, if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. <laughs> well, now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. You can't choose no again. This window thing is so funny. Um, do you think there's a solution for us? I could see how they might just mess with you and never give you a way out just as a joke. But I could have just been doing the mechanics wrong. And you were thinking judge with each number. There's a corresponding color and you have to find a computer with the off button in that color. Oh, do the computers have colors themselves? I know there was buttons that kind of match the colors, but I didn't look at the computer colors. I don't know if there's a way out of here. I can't actually click yes or no. I think this one you have to quit to get out. I don't think there's actually a way out of here. I don't think I've ever tried that rainbow. I'm not sure if something changes if you do it a second time. So I think we instead of quit to menu, you want to begin the game again. There we go. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh, thanks for looking that up, Frost. I would have wasted time trying to do it again. <laughs> We. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and this witty really commentary clever. into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? No. Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? So this time we'll click yes. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want. Like right now. You could have done it just then. Now <laughs> would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. I have to hear so everything you want to say. just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. Oh, God. There once was a man named Stanley who people considered so manly. <laughs> but the truth must be told... He was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. This would be miserable Which if you didn't have good lyrics. Parable. 
and lives an existence quite terrible. It's great. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too yes. will become quite unbearable. I wonder if it repeats until you go crazy. Cute little tune. You know, the one thing about this area that is kind of funny is that because it's such a bright white screen, I can see all the little messes on my monitor, you know, just like little spots or dust or whatever. <laughs> oh, I can see that dingo. Yeah. Okay. I don't think anything else happens. I think you have to quit. It's just looping. <laughs> he made the song just for us. It's so nice. Even okay, now, we got time Stanley's for a office was more. a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. That's funny. Now he's starting to change what he says in the intro. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know if we have anything else to do on the left. Let's go to the right this time. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh no, there was one other way we could go, actually. We can go down those stairs. I'll have to remember to do that next time. So instead of the meeting room, we're going to go to the lounge. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. It seems like something bad happened here. There's like mugs on the floor, paperwork everywhere. Like, what a mess. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Oh, he was going to say more in there. Let's follow instructions the first time. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Oh, that takes us right back Yet here. there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find a coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs so now to his boss's office. We'll deviate again on this path and go down. Let's see, I wish I could read all these things. Can't quite read all that text. I see, I wrote this in first period and left it in your locker on the way to second. It's what all the cool kids are doing, I've decided. Work are back. Yeah, I can't quite read most of that. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. I mean, where are his they? boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, 
Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Oh, that's Why creepy. did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined Whoa. himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Great question. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is like psychological horror. <laughs> I love it. Nerd. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. <laughs> oh my gosh. she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And Me in that there. moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. <laughs> then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. 
She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. So dark. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nerd, I did play this years and years ago, but I've never done this new version of the game that has the added stuff. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, actually, when I first started the game, the very first ending I got was one I had never seen before. Like, I've never even played the original game to exhaustion. I played it for a couple hours, but I know there's a lot of endings I haven't gotten in there yet. Alrighty, guys, this is probably a good stopping point. Let's go ahead and save it right here, and we will continue this on Tuesday. I can't wait to see more of this game. Such a unique, funny, clever game.